Illumination's unique structural composition gives the product exceptional flexibility, making it easy to install and maintain. As an installer, you know that conventional old-fashioned vinyl flooring can break, wrinkle, or permanently crease, making it very difficult to work with. Illumination vinyl flooring takes much less time to cut and install, is easier to seam, more forgiving than conventional vinyl, and is also easier to remove or repair. At its core, Illuminations has a highly resilient fiberglass base, encapsulated by a tough layer of PVC. This innovation of cushioned back flooring is now one of the fastest growing products in the market. Thanks to this revolutionary new construction, Illuminations has unmatched dimensional stability and durability, eliminating conventional problems of contraction, expansion, curling, and cracking. It is also extremely resistant to moisture. First, gather all the supplies you'll need prior to installation. Recommended supplies for the full spread professional installation method include 3 8 inch short nap paint roller, IVC Flex Tech pressure sensitive adhesive or Taylor 2037 pressure sensitive glue, IVC Flex Seam premium seam bond or Taylor 2062 seam sealer, resilient vinyl double face tape, sharp utility knife, straight edge, push broom, undercut saw, and a hand roller. Remove all furniture, appliances, and movable fixtures from the area to be covered. For a more finished look, carefully remove baseboards and quarter round, numbering them so they can be replaced correctly. Undercut all door jams to maintain a 1 8 inch gap using a piece of scrap material under the saw when cutting. This will allow the material to slide under the trim freely and will not pinch the material. Metal jams must have a 1 8 inch expansion gap as well and should be caulked with a flexible caulking sealant before completing the job. Material should always be rolled onto a core for transporting and storage. Cuts six feet or less in length may be rolled the short way. Never apply extensive pressure to the rolled material with tape or twine. Always keep the material dry. For storage, the area should be dry and the material should be protected from the weather and out of direct sunlight. Thoroughly in Proper preparation and installation play a key role in the performance and finished appearance of the resilient floor covering. Thoroughly inspect and prepare substrate and underlayment. Substrates must be clean, dry, flat, smooth, and free of dust and debris. The following are acceptable underlayments. Wood underlayment. Wood underlayment panels must be underlayment grade as specified and warranted by the manufacturer. Always fasten underlayment panels in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. Any failure of the underlayment or IVC US flooring as a result of the underlayment is not the responsibility of IVC US. Concrete, VCT, well bonded. Ceramic, well bonded. Terrazzo, well bonded, self-leveling and patching compounds, Portland cement based only, resilient floor, no more than two layers, well bonded, non-cushioned, radiant heat floors, not exceeding 85 degrees Fahrenheit, painted and or sealed concrete, loose lay method only, hardwood or engineered wood, loose lay method only. Do not install over these surfaces, carpet, cork, floating floors, softback vinyl, interflex and any perimeter bonded products. This product requires less floor prep since the material is so forgiving. However, you must always remember that trapped moisture or a loose substrate could lead to future problems. Moisture levels of concrete slabs before, during and after installation must be five pounds or less per 1,000 square feet for 24 hours. Using an anhydrous calcium chloride test according to ASTMF 1869 and pH must be between 5 and 9. However, if you are using ASTMF 2170 in situ, probes should be less than 75% RH. Remove all foreign substances such as wax, grease, dirt and any substance or chemical that would interfere with a good bond. Residual adhesive must be completely removed because the residual tack may restrict the floor. 
Where necessary, patch or fill all holes and cracks with quality Portland cement-based patching compound. High spots should be sanded smooth to eliminate the possibility of telegraphing. When installing over existing resilient flooring, it may be necessary to use liquid underlayment or embossing leveler to smooth any texture or embossing on the old floor. If the installation is over existing ceramic, emboss ceramic tiles to fill grout lines. If the subfloor is OSB or any porous surface, use Flex Prime Acrylic Latex Primer to prevent overabsorption of adhesive to the subfloor. The strength of the finished surface depends strongly on the integrity of the subfloor. Temperature and humidity extremes should be avoided if at all possible. Maintain room temperature above 65 degrees Fahrenheit for 48 hours before and during installation and 48 hours after completion. For radiant heated floors, the surface temperature of the subfloor should not exceed 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Before laying out the flooring, place acrylic double face tape at all areas where the flooring meets a doorway, as well as next to bathtubs, showers, toilets, sliding glass doors, and in similar areas. Tape should also be applied around air and heating vents to prevent air from blowing underneath the floor. Do not tape along walls or around perimeter of the room. Place an X with the tape under all heavy appliances, cutting away the excess tape to ensure the tape does not overlap. Never overlap double face tape. Position the material in the room, aligning the pattern with the most dominant wall to achieve the best appearance. For installations with seams, plan the layout for seam placement and measure to ensure proper pattern match and amount of material. Seam placement should be at least six inches away from existing seams and underlayment joints. Remove by rough cutting excess material, leaving approximately two inches up all walls and cabinets to be trimmed off later. Gradually cut down the flooring material at the corners and make relief cuts at projections to allow the material to lay flat before the final cuts are made. Long lengths of flooring can have a tendency to bow or twist during layout and installation. Use caution to ensure that the material is laying flat and is properly aligned before the final fitting and cutting of seams, especially when installing through doorways and around other fixed objects. After the pattern is aligned, cut in with a utility knife or trimmer, leaving a 1 quarter to 1 8 inch expansion gap along the perimeter of the wall in all vertical surfaces, such as cabinets and pipes, to allow for seasonal movements in the walls and subfloor due to changes in temperature and humidity. For larger installations installed over suspended wood floors or in a climate where there is a great temperature variance, you should leave a quarter inch gap. For bathroom installations, it is not necessary to remove the toilet. Make relief cuts around the perimeter of the toilet to make sure the vinyl flooring is laying flat before neatly trimming off the excess material. The material should not touch the wall, fixtures, or corners at any point. Otherwise, bubbles or wrinkles may occur. The material must lay flat to stay flat. Once the flooring has been trimmed to fit, you are ready to apply the adhesive to the subfloor. Fold back half of the flooring, being careful not to reposition the flooring as it is being handled. Apply an even layer of pressure sensitive adhesive to the subfloor with a 3 8 inch nap paint roller. Do not use a trowel to apply as it may leave beads of adhesive that may not fully dry. Allow the adhesive to dry completely. A heavy duty floor fan may speed drying time. The adhesive should feel tacky and there should be no transfer of adhesive to the material or your hand. If you do not allow sufficient drying time, the wet adhesive may release gases, causing bubbles. Laying the floor in wet may also create a permanent bond for the flooring. If you must install the floor in high humidity, always give the adhesive more time to cure. Remove the protective paper layer from all acrylic double face tape prior to placing the material into the adhesive. Carefully slide the material into place, being careful not to reposition the flooring as it is handled. Do not lift the vinyl into place because it may shift slightly and wrinkle. Repeat the process with the other half of the material. 
sweep over the floor, starting at the center, with a large push broom to release any trapped air. This is called the broom method. Do not use any type of flooring roller over the surface. For instructions on creating seams, please view the seaming section of the DVD. Otherwise, go to the section for finishing the installation. The full spread installation method is the preferred method of installation. The only exception to this is when illuminations is being installed over existing hardwood, engineered wood flooring, or painted and or sealed concrete. Please review and follow the layout and fitting section of this DVD before beginning the loose lay installation. If needed, place an X with the tape under all heavy appliances, cutting away the excess tape to ensure the tape does not overlap. Never overlap double face tape. For bathroom installations, it is not necessary to remove the toilet. As mentioned earlier, acrylic double face tape should be applied around the base of the toilet, pedestal sink, shower, and bathtub. Make relief cuts around the perimeter of the toilet, allowing the material to lay flat. Neatly trim off the excess material. After the flooring has been trimmed to fit, remove the protective paper layer from all acrylic double face tape and roll material over the taped areas with a hand roller. Sweep over the floor, starting at the center, with a large push broom to release any trapped air. This is called the broom method. Do not use any type of flooring roller over the surface. Never tape or glue edges around the perimeter of the room. For instructions on creating seams, please view the seaming section of the DVD. Otherwise, go to the section for finishing the installation. Please view this entire section for both the full spread and loose lay installation seaming methods. Run seams parallel to, not across, major traffic areas whenever possible. Never locate a seam perpendicular to a doorway or entrance. Whenever possible, avoid seams at major pivot points. Seam placement should be at least six inches away from existing seams and underlayment joints. Working with seams constructed in a fully adhered installation. Before cutting seams, make sure there is no trapped air and remove all wrinkles using the broom method. Position the material by overlapping the seam edges and create windows at the pattern grout line to help achieve the proper pattern match. Carefully knife in all material and adhere half of one piece of material opposite the seam edge following the instructions for the full spread installation method. Fold back seam edges and roll on pressure sensitive adhesive. Do not replace material until adhesive has thoroughly dried and is tacky but does not transfer when touched. Make sure pattern is matched. Seams should always be double cut, cutting through both pieces of material at the same time using a straight edge. It is important that the seam edge is cut in a straight line along its entire length and that the knife be held completely vertical to put a clean 90 degree edge on the product. If seams are cut snug or full, buckling can result. Remove excess material. Seams must be sealed using seam bond. Fold back one seam edge approximately 8 inches and lightly apply a small bead of seam sealer on edge. Starting from the center and working out, carefully guide the seam together by hand. Wipe seam edges to remove seam bond residue with a clean damp cloth and follow with a clean dry cloth. Any excess seam sealer may easily be removed within 15 minutes by wiping the area with a damp cloth. Roll seams firmly with a hand roller. Wipe seam clean with a clean damp cloth and follow with a clean dry cloth. Protect the sealed seams on your flooring to ensure proper seam bond. If your seams are disturbed before appropriate dry time, damage may result. Working with seams constructed in loose lay with tape installations. Follow all instructions just discussed under the full spread installation with the following exceptions. Do not adhere floor with adhesive. After the seam has been double cut following the previous instructions and the excess material has been removed, lap back the seam edge and position double face tape. Fold the material back 
and align the pattern to complete the seam. Follow the previously discussed instructions, applying seam bond to the edges. To view these instructions again, use the DVD player or remote back skip button now or select the seaming option from the menu. To finish the installation, install cove base, baseboard moldings, or quarter round to cover the expansion zone around the perimeter of the room. Fasten the moldings to the wall or other vertical surface, not the floor. Do not pinch the material at any point. Leave a slight clearance between the molding and the flooring to allow for seasonal movement of the subfloor. Transition strips should be used at the doorways. Apply non-staining, permanent, and flexible caulking sealant to fill the expansion gap around toilets, pedestal sinks, showers, bathtubs, sliding doors, and in other similar areas where the expansion gap will not be covered. If there is a ceramic sanitary coat and no place to install trim molding, simply apply flexible caulking sealant around the walls. Do not shove or slide appliances, furniture, or other items across the flooring. Always attempt to lift the item and move it into place. Reposition the appliances and heavy furniture using plywood, professional moving glides, or carpet with the pile side down to walk the item into position. Illuminations is extremely easy to repair using the following instructions. Select replacement material from salvage material, checking to be sure that the color and pattern match is acceptable. Ideally, the pattern should be an exact duplicate of the area to be repaired, but oftentimes, acceptable patch material can be found. Always try to plan the repair around a grout line. If grout lines are not available, an acceptable repair can often still be made as long as the color range matches the area to be repaired. Cut a piece of salvage material larger than the area you want to replace and align the pattern to the existing material overlapping the replacement piece to the damaged area. Use double face tape to secure the replacement piece over the existing material while cutting. Hold a utility knife at a 90 degree angle and double cut through both pieces of flooring. Square edges are important for a professional looking and hard to notice repair. Remove the damaged piece of material. If the flooring was installed using the loose lay with tape method, center acrylic double face tape under all seams making sure the tape does not overlap. Remove the protective paper layer from the acrylic double face tape. Tape is not necessary if the full spread professional installation method was used. Apply seam sealer to the edge of the replacement piece and position the replacement material into place. Then roll all seams firmly with a hand roller and wipe off the seam with a clean damp cloth followed by a clean dry cloth. The finished repair should look as good as the seams. To repair a gouge, simply heat the gouge so it will lay flat, lift the edge and apply seam sealer. Carefully work the edges together. Then roll the seam firmly with a hand roller and wipe off the seam with a clean damp cloth followed by a clean dry cloth. Improper installation or seasonal movement of walls and subfloor can cause a need for repairs. Most items are easily corrected by identifying the cause of the bubble, wrinkle, or crease and taking the appropriate corrective action. In most cases, bubbles or buckling are a result of flooring being applied over wet adhesive or where the material is too tight at a vertical surface, at a transition strip, or at a doorway where the material has become twisted. To correct, make sure that the material is not touching any vertical surface. Allow for a 1 8 inch gap at all corners and next to any vertical surface. Pull back material to allow adhesive to dry completely and slide material back into place. Remove air pockets using the broom method. The material must lay flat to stay flat. If the adhesive formed a permanent bond and the material will not release, you may be able to draw the air out of the bubble by using a hypodermic needle and then set a heavy object over the area for at least four hours. Creases or dents can be removed by applying heat, either by the palm of your hand or by applying a clean white towel over the affected area and applying low to medium heat with a hair dryer. Wrinkles may occur in loose lay installation where the floor was taped next to a transition strip or other area that was taped. To correct, gently lift from the tape and push out the fullness. 
if necessary, trim material and use a new piece of tape to re-adhere the flooring. If rolling traffic creates wrinkles in a loose lay area, you will need to correct by using the full spread installation method. Proper installation will help prevent the need for most repairs and will ensure years of satisfaction from your floor. As an installer, your job is complete. However, all floors require some type of regular care to maintain their beauty and good looks. We have included this informational section to complete your product knowledge. Illuminations vinyl flooring is extremely durable, easy to care for, and will provide years of satisfaction if these simple maintenance and prevention suggestions are followed. Maintain room temperature above 65 degrees Fahrenheit for 48 hours after installation is completed. This assures proper curing, setting, and bonding of products. When possible, lift heavy items and place them into position. Do not scoot or drag objects across the floor. Use floor protectors on furniture and appliance legs to reduce indentation and protect against tears. As a general rule of thumb, the heavier the item, the wider the floor protector needed. Place non-staining walk-off mats at outside entrances to reduce the amount of dirt brought into your home. We strongly recommend mats without a latex or rubber backing since these backings can damage the surface of your floor and cause permanent discoloration. Be careful with rolling casters. They can damage the floor. Therefore, we do not recommend them. In extremely high sunlit areas, close blinds, shades, or curtains during sunlight hours to prevent the floor from fading or discoloring over long periods of time. Sweep with a soft broom or vacuum with a wand attachment regularly to remove loose dirt or grit which can scratch your floor. We do not recommend vacuums that have a beater bar since it can visibly damage your flooring surface. Additionally, we do not recommend electric brooms with hard plastic bottoms with no padding as use may result in discoloration and deglossing. Never use a steam mop on your vinyl flooring. Wipe up spots and spills as soon as possible with a clean cloth or dampened with warm water. Remove dried spills with resilient floor cleaner on a clean white cloth and rinse. In most cases, shoe scuffs can easily be removed by rubbing the flooring with your finger. Never use highly abrasive scrubbing tools, steel wool, or scouring powder, which can scratch your floor. Clean your floor regularly with a no residue resilient floor cleaner or damp mop using a mild detergent in water followed by a clear water rinse. Do not use heavy detergents, abrasive cleaners, or mop and shine products. These products may leave a film that will discolor the floor or make it appear dull. For heavy duty cleaning, use a resilient floor stripper. Over time, if the shine on your floor begins to dull, Use a urethane polish designed for resilient floors to renew your floor's shine. Paste wax or solvent-based polishes should not be used. Resilient flooring, like other types of smooth floors, can become slippery when wet. Allow time for floor to dry after washing. Immediately wipe up wet areas from spills, foreign substances, or wet feet. Illuminations, easy to install and easy to maintain. <laughs>